A video that's upbeat and positive and talks about things that I love? You know what that means. Nobody cares. Hey everyone, my name is Gavin and I love horror. 2023 was an absolutely phenomenal year for horror movies, which made making this top five list really difficult. It's not a bad problem to have when you have so much great horror coming out, what felt like every week, but thankfully I'm dedicated to my craft and I've narrowed down the top five best horror movies of 2023. Let's get into it. Before I get into the main list, I do want to give a shout out to some honorable mentions because these are movies that were great, but not quite good enough to make the top five. Honorable mention number one, Megan. Megan was just an absolute phenomenon when it came out way back in January of 2023. From viral TikToks to Megan showing up at football games, you could not go anywhere without seeing the Megan dance or people trying to be like Megan. It was amazing. And the movie actually turned out to be a really, really fun time. I loved Megan for what it was. Such a silly horror movie and a fun premise of who, who doesn't love the idea of a best friend robot turning psychotic. I loved Megan. I think it's a great character, cannot wait for future installments of the series, and I think Megan is a nice gateway into the horror genre for younger fans. Honorable mention number two, no one will save you. In the past couple years, Hulu has gotten a reputation for just dropping some bangers of horror movies on us. They did it last year with Hellraiser and Prey, and this year they did it with the wholly original Alien Invasion movie, No One Will Save You. And while it may seem like a gimmick at first to have a mostly dialogue-free Alien Invasion movie, it actually has a lot of heart, has some great acting, and is actually pretty scary for an Alien Invasion movie in a genre that's kind of oversaturated at times. I love the movie, even if the gimmick does kind of wear off a little bit about halfway through and the ending could have been better. No one will save you shows that you can still take risk in the horror genre and have them pay off big. Honorable mention number three, Godzilla minus one. I am so conflicted on whether or not to put this in the main list or not, but I decided to keep it as an honorable mention because I didn't want to fight a bunch of people in the comments like, yeah, then Godzilla's not technically horror. So no, 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 no. Godzilla minus one, regardless of what genre it is, it is an absolutely incredible movie. Godzilla is scary in it. You've got the traumas of post-World War II Japan and the real villain being PTSD. It is a very deep movie for a movie that also includes a giant lizard monster. It is just an absolutely phenomenal film through and through. Probably my favorite movie of 2023. Not just horror, but anything, but because I don't want to fight y'all about, is it actually horror? It's going to be honorable mention number three, but regardless of genre, check out Godzilla Minus One, because it is awesome. Now it's time for the main list. Let's go. Number five, talk to me. While many of you will say this is the best horror movie of the year, I have to say it's a very good movie, but for me, it kind of fell victim to its own hype. By the time that I finally did get around to seeing Talk To Me, it had been hyped up so much that it kind of let me down when I finally did watch it. That's not to say it's an absolutely incredible movie and is a very original idea. I love how they modernized the idea of like the possession genre and the Ouija genre, Ouija, Ouija, Luigi, by making this hand that you can like invite spirits into you. I think that's great. And the way they modernize it, because you know if you find a hand that can possess you, you're gonna put that on the gram and show everybody what you did over the weekend. That's great, I love their use of social media. Talk To Me also features some truly uncomfortable scenes of graphic violence and a scene of toe sucking that made me wanna leave. Like you can show me people get their heads cut off all day long. I don't like people sucking on toes. I don't like it. Y'all can like your feet. I'm not gonna yuck anybody's yum, but I am not a foot guy. Don't like no toe sucking. I don't like feet. I don't like feet so much, I switched the metric system. Regardless, Talk To Me is an original and terrifying film that should not be overlooked. I look forward to next year's sequel to Talk To Me, Too Furious. Number four, Totally Killer. What if Back to the Future, but horror, is a concept that many horror movies have attempted in the past. However, they all seem to lack the charm and wit that Totally Killer absolutely nails. From poking fun at how problematic things in the 80s were to trying to solve a fun whodunit, Totally Killer is a fun ride from start to finish. I know this may not be as scary as some of the other entries on the list, but I love a good horror comedy and I love how much Totally Killer blends horror and comedy together for a really, really fun experience. And also, props to the cast and crew for making a killer that will be a deep cut Halloween costume idea for many years to come. Number three, Saw 
X. I can't believe it either, but somehow Saw X is one of my favorite horror movies of the entire year. I can't believe it, especially after the quality of the past three Saw movies that were not very good. I think I hate Spiral more and more with each passing day. But I guess the director and the producers thought, hey, what if we made a Saw movie set between Saw 1 and 2, you know, when Saw movies were good, and what if we just made it fun and brought Tobin Bell back and let him do some acting? And Tobin Bell does some really fine acting in Saw X. Saw X tries to shake the torture porn label that it has had since the very beginning and actually tells an incredibly human story that has you actively rooting for John Kramer, which is great. I loved seeing, and also the movie is not super green. So that's also a positive too. It actually has artistic shots. The entire first half of the movie, you're like, is this even a Saw movie? This is like an art picture. Is that allowed? Yes, it is. And that's what makes Saw X so great. And yeah, there's still a lot of violence and that good, good red blood, but still, Saw X is one of the most human movies you'll watch the entire year in the horror genre. And I can't believe I'm saying this about a fucking Saw movie. Good job, everybody involved. Loved it. Number two, Thanksgiving. Remember how much I said I love Totally Killer because it's a great horror comedy? You should remember because it was like a minute and a half ago when I talked about it. Take all that love for Totally Killer and multiply it times 10, and that's how much I loved Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving should not be a good movie. It's a movie based on a trailer from a gimmick movie from 16 years ago. It should not be good, but somehow Eli Roth is a master of the genre and makes an incredibly fun whodunit that is self-aware like Scream and just I laughed so much during this movie and had the most fun of any theater experience all year. And that's probably because I did not get to go to the Eras tour when it was in theaters. I think that's probably a better experience, but for me, Thanksgiving was so much fun. When your opening scene lampooning Black Friday is better than an entire movie called Black Friday, you know you've got some gold on your hands. Side note, Black Friday, why aren't you better? You had everything to succeed. Devin Sawa, Bruce Campbell, but why are you so shitty? Why you suck? Thanksgiving is great because it pays homage to the grindhouse genre, but modernizes it enough for new audiences who love a good slasher. And I love a good slasher. Thanksgiving is great, and I cannot wait for a sequel. Let me go back for seconds. Before we get to number one, would absolutely love if you leave a like for this video and subscribe to the channel. It all helps me out a ton. Want to grow this channel even bigger in 2024, so help me out. I do appreciate it. Hit that subscribe button, leave a like. It is appreciated. Number one, when evil lurks. Okay, enough about fun and humor. Let's get dark as f in Argentina. When evil lurks is quite possibly the most brutal possession film ever made. This movie is dark. When your money shot of a woman smashing an ax into her own face is in the first 20 minutes of the movie, and it's not even the craziest thing that happens in the first part of the movie, you know you've made something ridiculous. There are so many moments that genuinely shocked me in When Evil Lurks that by the end of it, I was just like, I need, do I start smoking now? Do I need a cigarette? Because it was such a tightly wound demonic masterpiece of a movie that just had you, oh, ugh, it just, it's a, ooh, nah, uh, just ooh. the dog, the dog, right? The dog. When Evil Lurks makes an incredible case that foreign horror is where it's at and overcoming subtitles is worth it to see these stories being told because they ain't got no rules, y'all. Americans, we got a lot of rules in our movies, but they don't, they, they ain't got rules in Argentina apparently because the dog, the dog. If you like your horror to be actual horror, When Evil Lurks is the movie for you, which is why it is the best horror movie of 2023. But what do you think? What was your favorite horror movie of 2023? Did yours make my list? Did I leave anything off? I feel like I did leave some stuff off because like Scream 6 was great this year and like when e uh, Evil Dead Rise, that was good. But just, I couldn't put them all on the list, man. That's how good horror was this year. Let me know in the comments below what you thought, what I left off. I want to talk about it. Let's talk about it. As always, please leave a like for this video and subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already. I greatly appreciate all of your support. It really does help me out. Until next time. Stay weird. And you're very handsome.